Hi, I'm Jana Mason from Watching Paint Dry, and we're at the beach today. Is there anything more relaxing than sitting at the beach? I don't know. Hopefully we'll capture some of that energy in the painting we're doing today. And today I'm painting on a watercolor board, and it's a little bit easy here at the beach where it's kind of windy because it's very stiff and it has a little bit different surface than we're used to. It has a gessoed surface. So to start off, I'm going to take a flat brush and water and just paint it over the surface. And, that, and this is just water and it'll begin to loosen the top of the surface which will make it a little bit easier for me when I paint. One of the nice things about this surface is that it lifts a little bit better than a regular piece of watercolor paper. For waves, that's kind of nice because we have a lot of areas where the white of the wave shows. So I'm not going quite to the edge, I'm going almost to the edge. I'm hoping if I don't go to the edge, I won't pick up quite so much sand. We'll see if that theory holds true. So I'm just painting with water. And I'll just let it sit for a couple minutes while we talk. When I'm painting water, lakes or rivers or ocean or here in this bay, I often bring an extra palette. So as you know, this is the standard palette that I typically use. This is a Stephen Quiller palette and it's arranged in a, a typical color wheel arrangement. When I go to the beach, it's nice to have a few more of the really beautiful blues a few sky blues, a few teals, colors that I wouldn't necessarily see in a Midwestern landscape, but are absolutely perfect when you're painting the waves. So my watercolor board should be a little bit wet, and as it's soaking in, it's gonna make it easier. But keep in mind, this is slightly a wet on wet technique. So we will need to uh, remember that things are the, the lines that we put down, the strokes that we put down are going to move a little bit. They're not going to stay exactly where we want them. Okay, so as we start this painting, I'm going to look out at this beautiful horizon and we see where the water meets the sky and it's always a little bit darker at the horizon line. We also see the coastline and these beautiful uh, there's the wharfs, there's some rocks, there's beautiful houses, there's development, there's trees and a lovely uh, scallopy edge to the hillside. And then because of where we've picked to sit, there also is this fantastic diagonal that cuts across. When you're creating interest in a painting, it often is especially nice to have some strong angles because they help you direct the eye. So what I'm gonna start with is putting in my horizon line. And horizons, which you probably know, but maybe it's nice to re refresh it, horizons are horizontal. So this is a horizontal line. As the shore comes out, I'm gonna put this, and I'm, I, I'm drawing this a little bit heavier than I would normally, just so hopefully it'll help you see. So I'm drawing the horizon line coming out. And then this is where the wharfs and some of the development and things like that will be coming out too. Um, there's a lot of boats moored over here. So I'm not gonna indicate those yet. This um, strong diagonal of the, kind of the cliff, the little hill, where the dune we're sitting on is gonna come across like this. And then I wanna have enough room for beach and this will be the front line of my beach. Okay, this will be kind of the back line of the beach. This will be where the waves are going to crest. Across here. Okay, so we have the sky, the land, we have the back part of the water, I have the wave here and this is the top foamy part of the wave, I have a little bit of the beach as the water comes in, a little bit more beach here, and then I have the uh, cliff that we're sitting on in this greenery. Generally what I do is I start with the sky and in this case I think that's what I'm going to do. When we have quite a bit of mist and fog today, 
which gives a beautiful filtered look to what's happening with the water. So I think what I will start with is a very light, mm, very light cerulean. Yeah. I had some orange that got blobbed on here in the corner, so I'm trying to take my brush and kind of scrub that out. And because this is a watercolor canvas, I can take a little piece of tissue or paper towel and blot it. So I'm taking my paper towel and I'm wadding it up into a, um, a little ball, I guess, and I'm going to tap it here and there and pull out a little bit of, pull a few shapes out. So it's going to make my sky look a little more fluffy. There's not big powerful clouds here but you can definitely see some of the clouds in the sky so I think I'm gonna leave it about like that and I don't want a hard line at the edge so I'm going to soften this And while I have this color on my brush, I'm just going to add a little bit overall to where the water is. Now, I want to make sure I don't inadvertently paint over the white of my waves. So I'm just going to take a little tape and put some pieces of tape here and there to remind myself, hey, this is, this, these are the white curly parts of the waves. Don't paint over this. Now it's not going to stick very well because my board is wet, but it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm just using this for a reminder. In some of my other paintings, you might notice that sometimes I'll take a different watercolor pencil and I'll just put like a little X there indicating don't paint here because you want to leave this white. But in this case, this is going to help remind me. If something like this is distracting to you, then don't do it. To me, it, I get, when I'm painting, I tend to get into the flow of my brush and I sometimes paint outside the lines. I sometimes just go over the lines because I'm enjoying the stroke. So this helps me remember. I think what I'll turn to now is to think about a little bit of this foreground. When you're painting a complex painting like this, it helps if you balance the pieces. So I painted a little bit at the top, now I'm gonna paint a little bit at the bottom. And what we have here is some beautiful scrub um, vegetation of the dunes. We have some lovely flowering plants. So I'm gonna take a bright green, and in this case it's gonna be a like a spring green or a sap green, which is a really pretty bright color. And I am painting this with a flat brush because I want to make sure I'm just covering, uh, oh, just because it's fun. That's just the brush I want to use right now. You could easily use a round brush for this. And since I like every stroke to have a little bit different color in it, I keep going back to get oh, some other colors so nothing is exactly the same. There's no point, there's so many colors to pick from, and brushes are so fun to use, there's no point making everything the same color. Unless you're doing a color blocked painting, like someone like a Rothko or some of the um, 
uh, uh, abstract expressionists did where uh, they would just use a solid block of color, which is great, but that's not the effect we're going for here. And while I'm here, I'm just going to be working a little bit to scrub out some of that blue line. We'll come back to that and can scrub it out more later. Okay, the fact that I have these two diagonals going, you can already feel some of the energy going across. What I think I'll work on now will be a little bit of the, I think the color behind the crest of the wave. And the sea is getting turned up a little bit more, so there are more of what I call these eyelash strokes. And this is a stroke that I studied uh, a John Singer Sargent strokes a lot. And it's a stroke that you take a round brush, you start, you press down, and then you come up again. So it's a, um, it's a stroke that you can use for waves, you can use for um, leaves, you can use for texture, like in sand or sidewalk or something. And it's what I call the eyelash stroke. I want this color to be a little bit more gray. So I am mixing some, a little bit of green in here and I might mix a little bit of the red in here. Red and green as complementary colors will make your, the brightness of your color dulled down. So you can see that this blue is getting more gray. And it's always important to pay attention to your subject. So I'm taking a few minutes now to remind myself of what this beautiful scene looks like. And I'm going to I have a little bit of blue here, so I'm going to put one strong, one strong stroke across here. And then here's where the eyelash stroke is coming in, where it's just these, uh, you touch down and then you come up. And you go different ways. You always want your strokes to be, every stroke to be a little bit different. You don't want to repeat strokes. And remember, I'm paying attention so I'm not running over where my tape is. Okay, I'm going to stop now and I'm going to let this dry and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Hi, we're back. We're going to get back to work on this painting at the beach. And while you're away, I guess I got a little bit of water sprayed on it, so I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to take a little bit of paper towel and dab it here in the sky. There we go dab it here. Watercolor can be a little unforgiving, but if you tend to go with the flow, it'll work out. You are working with your skills and experiences, and you're working with everything that's out in the environment with you. So you're working with nature, you're working with the, the wind, the water, the atmosphere, the humidity and crazy things that are happening on the canvas. Okay, so let's start again. I'm gonna work now a little bit on this uh, triangle of land that's back here. And I'm going to take a smaller round brush. And on this triangle, I'm gonna use a lot of energy. So we're gonna start by pouncing and dancing on this space. And this is a time to really enjoy and just kind of absorb the energy of the day and where you're sitting and bring that energy to your painting. So I want my strokes to be random and unusual, not too repetitive. Uh, on the land, there's not only a lot of green, but there's some brown and other colors. 
So I'm going to try to build all those colors into my kind of a hodgepodge of strokes here. Sometimes I want it to feel a little bit more organized, so I'm rounding off some of the shapes. And sometimes I'm pushing one through because no horizon, well, if it's far enough back, it'll seem like it's completely smooth. But a horizon at this midpoint, I mean, a, a landform at this midpoint, you do see the greenery and the shrubs and the top of the trees, which allows you to have a broken up top of it. And there's a number of houses through here, but what I'm gonna start with by showing you is how I'm gonna handle some of these boats that are in the marina across the bay. And this is a really pretty color brown, very, seems very, I mean green, seems very natural. I wanna get all these shapes filled in. Some of them, again, I will use a round swirling motion and some of them more of a punching motion. Naturally, the trees over there are going to have the shape of whatever your natural vegetation is where you're painting. If you're painting someplace where there's gonna be a lot of palm trees, you might see a lot of more erect trees that then have a kind of a top knot on them as a palm tree would. If you are painting someplace like here where we have a combination, there's some palm trees and there's some uh, more uh, deciduous uh, trees and with rounder shapes. So I'm kind of liking how this is going. I'm saving some of the white here so that I can put some of the buildings in because that's where there's the most of the resorts, the hotels and some commercial property over there. Okay. And you can see too by kind of layering it, you get the sense that there's some that are farther back and some that are more in the foreground. Now, before it gets dry, there's a bunch of boats here in the marina. And I'm going to take my um, brush. I'll just take the end of my brush and I'm going to scrape into my wet paint. And by scraping into the wet paint, it allows me to move the paint. And this is going to look like the mass of the boats that are over there. And there's quite a few and they're different heights. So I'm going to dig in a few more times. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to be painting the wharf and the wharf is far enough away that even though it's made out of brown timbers, I presume wooden timbers, because it's on the water, it has a lot of blue in it too. So I'm going to grab some blue into this brown I'm mixing up and have kind of a bluish brown, a little bit more brown, a little bit more. Yeah, I like that color. Okay, so we're going back to where the boats are and here's where I'm putting the now that I see it against the water, I probably need a little bit more brown. And that's the great thing about watercolor. You can go back in and you can say, oh yeah, that needed to have a little bit more in it. I'm going to continue the wharf pretty much. It doesn't extend all the way down. I think that looks good. There's a building in here that is white and it has a unique shape on its roof. And I'm going to kind of sketch that in so you can see it. I don't want to make it too big. I don't want it to stand out too much. So I actually, I'm going to simplify the roof a little bit. And then it has a couple of just dark shapes that I'm going to put in on the roof. Here's one of the dark shapes. Here's a dark shape, there's three of them, and then there's a dark shape. And the front of it is much more gray, and the roof is white. The front of this building is quite gray. Thank you for watching. Join us next time, The Watercolor with Jane M. Mason.